Good morning, this is Heather Smith with RailRacingTips.com and I wanted to welcome you to Pistols Progress episode 30. So today is going to be a little bit different. I'm not actually riding this morning. I just got out to the barn and I popped Pistol on the Equivibe uh, while I talked to you. I'm actually going to a barrel race this evening so I'm mixing up his schedule a little bit and uh, this will be his first official barrel race since last year and we are just going to exhibition today um, just because I'm gonna give him the opportunities to sort of get back in a routine gradually and not have necessarily like super high expectations he's still really in the process this month of getting his body really prepared and conditioned uh, for competition and so by just taking him and exposing him to the barrel racing environment and just keeping it low-key it's just basically a way to make sure he's um, mentally and emotionally prepared too. And he doesn't necessarily have um, a history of you know being hot or having any gait issues or anything like that, but even for a more laid back horse that's pretty solid, if they've had an extensive amount of time off, I think that um, it's just a, a nice thing to do to sort of in, just gradually get them back into a routine. And so another reason why I'm going to take into a couple barrel races is that this is kind of interesting. Um, so when I brought him back after uh, a very long time off last year um, when he was sidelined for uh, a long period because of an injury, <laughs> the first time I went to exhibition, he was like actually kind of hot to trot. Um, I was just going to do a, a slow exhibition and he was kind of like ramped up and she's like totally, um, I kind of giggled about it because he's completely within, you know, control. It's not really his nature to be that way, but it was like, it was like too much. It was like, it was not a place you want to be starting from. Like it's one thing if that would have been his behavior if he was like, running at the top of his game and we were like making a lot of um, runs, right? Or like a couple runs a week or something. But that's again, it's like why I do this. It's just like a spot check. And so when I did that spot check, when I went through this process last year, um, he was like pretty ramped up. And I thought, you know, we're not gonna go forward with like um, actually entering until he can do an exhibition. Uh, just like calmly like he needs to be a more responsive and connected to my body than he is to the environment and making assumptions so of course um, horses that run a lot you know they do tend to get kind of amped up and so forth but um, you know there's definitely like boundary lines as far as what kind of um, they can still be responsive and in our hands and not be doing things that are dangerous. Like there's definitely boundaries there. We have to have standards that we set for their behavior because if I was to just have gone forward with competing with him starting out being like um, a little too amped up, then I would basically just be setting him up to get even more so every time I would go to compete. And I thought, no, we're going to make sure this is all leveled out and he kind of woosaws before we go forward. And so, um, Anyway, that's just like a side note from what I, I did not expect him because when his comeback last year was after like a five year period of not competing and I thought, well, you know, it, but he, he kind of acted like he had been running like, you know, every like a couple times a week, you know, like he was like really, he, let's just say elephants don't forget, neither does pistol. <laughs> So anyway, um, but that we have to always be willing to go back to that neutral sort of baseline before we amp up the pressure and the expectations. Because if our foundation isn't good from the start and we keep adding more pressure and intensity on top of it, then things are likely to sort of come apart and crumble and turn into more than we really want um, to handle. So. I hope that's something valuable to keep in mind. I was going to just talk a little bit today about how I prepare him to uh, to like travel to haul. And so he's getting a little Equivibe session now while I'm visiting with you. By the way, if you want to learn more about that and what a game changer it's been for our horses, go to EquivibeTherapy.com. And um, so it's been such a blast bringing you for a ride behind the scenes and things are really starting to come together and get exciting at this point. And so when I am preparing to travel, I always, or I'm gonna go to a barrel race, let's say it's just a one day thing where I just go for um, the day or an evening or something. Um, I will always do uh, the same kind of therapy session that I do pre-ride, I will do before I load up and haul them. 
So he's actually getting a little Equivibe right now and I will likely in the afternoon do a little bit more um, therapy and just uh, do that as I'm getting ready to go. And then I always haul our horses with hoof boots on and we use easy boot gloves with some pads in them. And the reason I like the easy boot gloves over soft rides is that um, they are excellent for your horse for like walking them from point A to point B. I don't necessarily ride with them in like a soft arena. I do, you might have seen the pictures from the trail ride Craig and I went on, which a lot of it was on harder ground. Um, but easy boot gloves are definitely made to actually um, be ridden in and moved around in. Not that I would ever, you know, make a run in them or anything because they essentially add some mass to the foot. They add a little bit of weight to the foot. They'll slow down break over a little bit. But they're not like heavy and clunky and um, as big as say like soft rides for example. But anyway, what you can do with the Easy Boot gloves is that they are awesome for when your horse is standing around on hard ground at the barrel race. Even if it's just grass, the ground can still be really hard. And um, especially we want to minimize how much time they spend standing on asphalt or concrete if possible. Like try to eliminate that if you can completely. But these Easy Boot gloves, you can put different thicknesses of pads um, in them and uh, if you have a thicker pad you'll have to have a little bit bigger boot you can actually get a fit kit that is really helpful for uh, determining what size your horse wears but I think we have like four pairs that range from like size um, 0.5 to 1.5 and most they're wides and uh, that's just what fit our horses but um, anyway they are awesome for traveling in we also have um, padding underneath the rubber mats in our trailer, but we also put those easy boot gloves on, hoof boots with pads in them on, their horse, on the horse's front feet when we travel. That's like an all the time thing. Even if we're just going eight miles to the local arena, um, we always have those hoof boots on. And then they, when they're hanging out at the trailer and I'm just getting them ready, um, they always, they have those on then too. Or if I have to leave my, lead my horse from point A to point B across the parking lot, um, it's not that our, hor our horses are like gravel crunching, you know, like they have um, really callous sole built up, so they're not tender footed at all. But um, to help sort of cushion their joints and their feet and just lessen wear and tear, this just helps them, um, l like lessens the tendency for them to get um, kind of stiff and sore basically. And it's kind of like having a Dr. Scholl's for us. And um, it just helps uh, relieve, like I said, some of the uh, stress on their body and we'll just have them feeling a little bit, have a little bit more spring in their step when it's time to compete. So we use and really uh, like using those a lot. And so the other thing I absolutely always, always, always do is have hay in the trailer. And um, especially if a horse is ulcer prone, I would want to have some alfalfa, which has higher calcium, which helps buffer um, the acid in their stomach, which tends to ramp up when they're under stress. Um, but I will usually have some grass hay too. Pistol isn't necessarily ulcer prone, but they have hay in front of them at all times. Even if it's just a short trip, um, I want enough hay that they basically like never run out of it. And when, when we get to the barrel race, I'll, I'll have hay in front of them too. And I might take it away like an, um, so that like the last hour or so before the actual run that they don't have the hay. But um, I won't actually take dot com off hay until like right before we go to warm him up um, just to help keep his stomach settled. And so what I'm going to do today, even though it's an exhibition, is that I'm going to bring my, um, I'm going to wrap Pistol's legs too when we go to the barrel race. I'm going to bring my ice boots with. It's basically going to be like a dress rehearsal uh, just to make sure that I'm back in a routine too and that I'm stocked up on everything I need in the trailer. Um, we have some back on track polo wraps that we sometimes use to wrap their legs with. When we're traveling, I have some back on track quick wraps. Um, we use uh, draw it out on their legs underneath those wraps. Um, sometimes I put an essential oil blend and mix it in with that, draw it out. And um, you have to be really careful what sort of things that you're putting on, like liniments and stuff, on um, under wraps because some of it can burn your horse's skin. So that is really um, critical that you always read and make sure that whatever you're putting on and then wrapping over it is actually safe for your horse. And um, <laughs> I'm watching Pistol back there. Uh, so. Anyway, I'm just catching up with my thoughts. I'm looking, checking out what he's checking out. 
So I'm super excited. And again, um, so I'll tell you too a little bit about um, how I prepare myself. And so um, a lot of us go to like jackpots. Um, if we go during the week, they're in the evening. And not all of them have like concessions available. And if they do, it's not always the healthiest food. And I am really, really specific about everything that I take in mentally and physically. And so I am, um, I always, always prepare my own healthy food from home to bring with. And I, I think, like, I personally am one of those people who does not miss a meal. <laughs> and I think I just feel better. Maybe it's like keeping my blood sugar consistent or something. And then when I am, um, don't set myself up to get like really starving hungry, then I'm not as likely to like overeat when I do get around to it. And then I really want to try to avoid eating a big meal like really late in the evening. And so basically what I'll do is that I'll have a good lunch like kind of late in the day and then I will pack a cooler with food to kind of snack on and or snack on like in between doing stuff with my horse at the actual barrel race into the evening. And so I'm I think in all the years that we've lived down here and that we've been out and about and going to do things, I think we've eaten at a concession stand like one or two times. But I'm always really intentional about that. And the thing, the way I look at it is that um, if you leave something to chance, like it becomes sort of like out of your control, like you're kind of a victim of your circumstances. But when you are really intentional and specific and prepare and think about things in advance, then you can be more intentional about essentially your results because the more, the higher quality like food that we take in, the higher quality um, energy we're gonna have, the more mentally, the more mental well-being we're gonna have, the more clarity, the quicker response time. And everything, like when you think about how you want to excel as a, as a barrel racer, like that it, to me, like that is so high priority. And I am definitely, I am determined to do every single thing that I can to give myself an advantage. And eating healthy is definitely, definitely at very high at the top of that list. Like it just doesn't make sense to me to put so much effort into everything that we do with horses and then like take those simple things that are really not all that difficult and then like not take advantage of that opportunity to be at our absolute best. And let me tell you, it makes a big difference. And sometimes if you're maybe not in a habit of eating really healthy, you don't really know like how crappy you feel. And I, in my experience, when I have made changes to my diet, it'll take about like, like you can make a very, very fast change to your energy levels and your mood like within hours. Like pay really close attention to how you feel like a couple hours after you eat. And you will start making connections and connecting the dots. But make a commitment for like two weeks to just eating really clean and it will like change, it'll trans, it can transform your life. And so I'm really intentional about that. And so I have a cooler, I don't even remember where I got it, I've had it for years, but it's shaped kind of in a, it's kind of tall and long and narrow and it's a soft cooler and my ice boots actually fit in there. So those are in the freezer. I throw those in that cooler along with some ice packs to keep them cold. I pack a cooler for myself with tons of water. I learned that really fast when we moved to Texas. Like you think you need like three or four bottles of water and actually you need like a dozen. It's insane. <laughs> so um, drinking tons and like way, way, way more than you think you'll need. And you know, you guys, a lot of you are already out and about and running barrels and doing this and I've been doing it all summer. This is the first one I've gone to in a little while, but oh my gosh, it staying hydrated though is so key to feeling your best and not getting a headache, not getting tired and so forth. So um, I'm just going to catch up on comments really quick. Yeah, I think so too, Lori. I think in all the years that I have been um, traveling, and I mean, I suppose that there is a little element of the choke risk when you're feeding hay in the trailer, but I think that the benefits definitely outweigh the risk factor because, um, and like basically any horse that has any little bit of pre-run anxiety at all, I'm definitely going to look into treating them and having them on something um, supportive uh, or, you know, get them on the track to getting, um, seeing if they have ulcers and getting them healed and really supporting them in that sense. So, um, but yeah, we have always fed hay in the trailer, like at all times, and um, they don't go anywhere without hay in front of them, and we've never ever had um, a choke issue. 
And so I just noticed that there is some like little dust in the, we have in our trailer, two of the stalls have mangers and two of the, the last two don't. So um, the stalls that have mangers actually have a bunch of like little particles and hay dust in it. And so I'm going to make a point today to go in there and sweep all that out because that stuff's just going to get airborne and blow around and then you increase the odds for um, some respiratory issues. So. I'm uh, getting ready today, making sure the hay bags are packed. Um, he's going to get his leg wrapped before we go. He has a PHT magnetic sheet that I will put on him. Um, some of these things as far as leg wrapping and the sheets and stuff will kind of depend a little bit on weather and heat and how far we're traveling and how long and everything and I just kind of like go with my gut and I think about the different options and like how compressed you know, like their leg is going to be, whether it's more of a polo wrap or a um, quick wrap, which is a, has more sort of insulation, but it's like softer. So anyway, I, I just take all those things into consideration and then kind of play it by ear and day by day and just think about um, what my horse needs support with. But I definitely go, definitely go the extra mile because if there is something that takes like an extra 10 minutes, um, to do before I go, but it takes like a tenth or two. I mean, if it makes a difference that's so subtle that it's barely perceivable, it is still worth it to go the extra mile. And when I am at a barrel race, like I try to duck away in the trailer for a couple minutes to um, really get in the zone mentally. But I, other than that, I do not sit still. Like I am constantly going. When I get to the barrel race, I bring my red lights and I actually do another like 20 minute therapy session on them when I get there and before I warm up. And so today that'll be my plan when I arrive. I'll saddle, I'll go warm up. It's a new place I'm going to. So I'll introduce them to the arena, get there really early. I highly, highly recommend that. Like you should be, or we should be in the habit of being the first trailer at the facility when we're going to barrel races. And I know sometimes your work schedules and stuff interfere with that, um, but I remember back when I was working, um, a, a, had like a regular sort of job, I actually really went outside of my comfort zone and negotiated specific hours so that I had the freedom to do what I wanted with my horses. And I, I remember being so intimidated by asking for that, but you have to remember like what is what is most important to you. Like the worst, if you're a valued employee, the worst thing they could say would be no, or we could do this for you, but not this or something. It's always worth looking at possibility instead of limitation is, is really critical. So um, anyway, I'm going to get there really early, going to introduce Pistol to the arena. Basically, he's going to get his exercise ride there instead of here this morning. It's going to be at the barrel race when we get there um, this evening. And then I have signed up for four exhibitions, and they're just going to be slow. I'm, I'm just slow and correct, and like I probably won't even do more than a trot in the exhibitions because the purpose of this is to just get him back in a routine and to make sure he's mentally and emotionally where he needs to be. And so I was gonna mention one more thing, and that is how I prepare myself mentally when I'm going to compete. And so I'm gonna, again, this is like a, a dress rehearsal. I'm gonna be doing on the way to the barrel race the same mental game prep that I do when I'm actually going to enter. And so I have a specific playlist on my phone of songs that I only listen to when I'm getting pumped up for competition. So I am a little bit more of a laid back person and a laid back rider by nature. I have been told when I was showing horses that I had a calming effect on them, which is a great thing for troubled horses or colts and so forth, but it's not necessarily a great thing to have a calming effect on horses when your horse is already plenty calm to begin with. So I have really had to train myself to um, kind of flip the switch and be more aggressive. And a lot of this has to do with training ourselves physically, doing speed drills, things like that, and our workup program is a big thing. But I also do some actual visualization, which um, I'm gonna, I'm kind of on the verge of sharing a little bit more about that program and what I'm doing. Um, but if you wanna know, some, I'm trying some different things, but if you wanna know a little bit about it, see exercise 11 in the next 50 barrel racing exercises. 
Um, but what I do is on the way to the barrel race, and any time I'm driving, I'm constantly, I don't listen to like regular radio, I don't ever listen to the news. I listen to like positive, uplifting things only. That might be K-Love Radio, or it might be um, like podcasts, uplifting or educational, encouraging personal development stuff. But I have a specific songs playlist that I listen to on the way to a barrel race to get me pumped up. And then I've created a slideshow of affirmations that I play on, in a slideshow. They're just images in an album on my phone. And you can play them in a slideshow. So while I'm driving, I can just glance at it as I'm listening to this music and I'm reading those, those statements and I am just like getting so pumped up and prepared. And then using that time when you're just sitting there to like totally get in the zone. And then like when you arrive there, you don't, and your attention really needs to be on your horse. You, um, I might duck in the trailer and like take just a couple minutes to get in the zone one more time, like before I actually compete. But most of that is gonna be done on the way to the barrel race where I can utilize that, that travel time. And um, so that's really critical, I think, to purposely be intentional, get our mind in the right place. So, yeah, Stacy, it's definitely much, much um, better, like, uh, <laughs> to uh, to be there early. And that's been my motto. When I when I lived. Um, in uh, Wyoming and we actually live really close to uh, a nice facility where you could go and ride in the winter. I remember um, it was always me and um, you guys maybe have heard of um, Bobby Walsh the bull rider. Well his dad um, train, or would run barrels and train some horses and it was always me and Bob Welsh who, was, who used to be a bull rider too I think but it was always me and him like banging on the door to the facility before the people that work there had ever even arrived. And I can't tell you how many times that I get to the barrel race before the producer. So Stacy, we lived in um, Gillette and I lived in Sheridan before that, so. Anyway, um, so this has been kind of long-winded, but there are a lot of really critical things that go into my preparation uh, for competition day and even though we're just going to exhibition and it's just going to be slow and laid back I'm just going to do an exercise ride and I'm just going to make sure he's in a good place mentally we worked the pattern on Monday everything went awesome so I'm expecting you know great things I just want to make sure that um that like I'm just doing this to just really build his confidence so that when I ask him in a few weeks to just just give me everything as he's got. There is no like <gasps> hesitation or worry on his part where he's like, it's game time, just like it will be for me. And like, there will be nothing in him that would contribute to holding back. Like, I want my horse to be feeling on his game and aggressive and confident and ready to just eat up the ground. And this is essentially how I do it. So, um, Anyway, it's been a blast coming to you this morning, as it always is, and I'm not sure if um, I'll have someone uh, with me or not to like, you know, get some fun pictures and stuff, but I'll be sure, I'll try to update my stories as I can, but the truth is, I really, it's really, really important to me to stay in the moment, and I think that is really key to staying focused on our run, and, um, and the key to our mental game, too, is like, uh, not really investing or paying too much attention to like what or judging and labeling or like thinking about what other people are doing like you're there for one reason one reason only keep your eyes on your own paper and focus on the communication between your horse like you're not there it is all about doing everything you can on that day to prepare yourself to make the absolute most of it that you can and every step that you make and every single day leading up to those competition days is critical, but the competition day itself is even more so. So stay in the zone the entire time. It is about the, the communication, the link between you and your horse, and that is always your number one focus. And everything else is just periphery that just, you know, doesn't matter. And so um, I hope that's helpful. My intention is always for you to really move forward with what I shared today, to think about it, but most important to um, take action on it. So I hope it's been a blessing to you. 
And um, until next time, remember as always that knowledge is power. And then I will have some more amazing tips for you as things start getting heated up. I'll be back with Pistols Progress. It'll be episode 31 on Friday morning at 8.30 Central. AM. So I will see you then. Thanks for tuning in.